the main purpose of doing this chapter in A2 is to talk about a certain type of energy. And uh, the energy that we are talking about is basically, uh, I mean, somebody already mentioned it, lattice energy, which is in fact lattice energy. And we'll talk about that towards the uh, second part of class today. We'll see that in a spin a bit, also known as lattice enthalpy. And lattice enthalpy is similar to a term that we've seen in AS level called bond enthalpy. Philosophically, it's sim similar. Not really, it's, it's got the science similar, but philosophically, it's similar. Bond enthalpy is a way to determine the strength of covalent bonds and also, therefore, covalent bonding in molecules. Lattice enthalpy is a way of measuring the strength of ionic lattices. So this is with, with respect to covalent bonds and this will be with respect to ionic bonds. And we'll see that today, all right? We'll first go through some reactions that you guys remember from AS level before we look at this definition today. So now we look at some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about first. So you might remember this kind of reaction. And a uh, solid plus half Cl2 gas becoming NaCl solid. Now, if I were to ask you, what would you call this reaction? In fact, forget this one only. I'm going to give you a group of three so that you can identify the type of reactions easier. So, when I draw this out, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen making CH3CH2OH that we know as ethanol, or even magnesium solid plus half O2 gas making MgO. You know, you probably see these three reactions on the board. If I were to ask you for one type of reaction, or, or these three have, can be labeled by one type of reaction, what would that be? If there was one label you could give to all of these three reactions, what would that be? Enthalpy change of formation absolutely so these are all enthalpy change of formation thank you aman that was mighty nice of you okay so basically these are all three delta hfs standard enthalpy change of formations all right that's the first thing we look at now knowing that it's standard enthalpy change of formation these are three so we've seen these three reactions or other types of it. And the key for this uh, metric is that you start off with elements and you're making a compound. Our focus, by the way, will be for ionic compounds. So basically, if I were to label this as the reactions number one, two, and three, I'm gonna be focusing on reaction number three. Right, oh, sorry, one and three. Those are the formations to make ionic compounds. That's, so that's one type of reaction that you might remember. Then, Another type of reaction, that's just a recap so that we are all comfortable with this, is that another type of reaction was sodium gas becoming sodium one plus gas. Magnesium gas becoming magnesium one plus gas. And also magnesium two plus gas becoming, sorry, or magnesium uh, one plus gas becoming magnesium two plus. You've probably seen this reaction also. Now, if I were to label this as reaction number four, five, and six, you could say that four and five are one type and six is another type. What would you label four and five as? Four and five are first ionization energies. And number six is the second ionization energy of magnesium. After looking at these first and second ionization energy reactions, there's another type of reaction that I'd like to label also. This one looks like magnesium solid becoming magnesium gas. You know, you've got sodium solid becoming sodium gas. You've got half O2 gas becoming O gas. You have half Cl2 gas becoming Cl gas. You can even have half I2 solid becoming I gas. These are reactions you've seen before. Yeah. These are all, thank you Z, you are on the dot. Eh? These are all known as standard uh, enthalpy of atomizations. So 
This is also, now these are all the type of reactions that you need to keep in mind for what's ahead for us. Then, what else do you need to keep in mind? The Hess cycle. Where we had done something like this, okay, if you can go from, uh, if a reaction can go from a certain state A to B and then from B to C, the total energy change to go in these steps is equal to the direct energy change as long as the starting stage, which is A in this case, and the ending stage is the same. The manifestation that we guys have saw in the classes was that we would make three box diagrams for A, B, and C. And this is stuff also known from AS, where A can become B, and B can become C, or A can directly become C. A to B, B to C, A can directly become C. Now, we've seen this has cycle. What we are going to do today is another version of this has cycle. This is a three-step has cycle. But a hair cycle doesn't have to have only three stages, it can have multiple stages. For example, I could do A becoming B, becoming C, which becomes D, which becomes E. And let's say my direct route is from A to E. And if I label this as steps one, two, three, four, and the overall step as step number five, the energy change, then the hair cycle states that this energy change plus this plus this plus this which is the indirect route equals to the direct route as long as the starting and the ending stage are the same so the Hess cycle implementation would be here the energy of reaction 1 plus the energy of reaction 2 plus energy of reaction 3 plus energy of reaction 4 equals to the overall energy change 5 this is me applying the Hess law all right that's what this is doing then so this is also stuff that we have done before but we need more to do in a2 so we we'll take this model and apply this to the first reaction we saw so now let's go back to the first equation i shared with you which was sodium solid and half cl2 gas becoming na cl solid and we know this, let's call it, I mean, we know what this is called. This is delta H formation. I'll label this as reaction number one. So we've seen this, right? Now what I'm saying is that we're going to be taking this and breaking it up. So this is, imagine this is your starting stage and this is your end stage. I can go in one step and then break this up into multiple steps. For example, sodium can go from sodium solid to sodium gaseous atoms. Chlorine can go from half Cl2 ga gas into Cl gaseous atom. This reaction we saw earlier, this is atomization of sodium. This reaction we saw earlier in AS and also just right now, atomization of chlorine. Then, <laughs> sorry, I'm just a little sniffly. Then we can also ionize sodium and this becomes sodium plus gas. We also know what this reaction is called. Then we are going to see another reaction where chlorine is going to gain electrons to become a chloride ion. Now the reason why we did this is because we want opposite ions to make this compound. And this is a reaction you haven't seen. Now what is this reaction? This reaction is chlorine gaseous atom gaining one mole of electrons to become chloride ions that's the reaction chloride gaseous ions now i will get back to this in a few minutes this reaction is called first electron affinity let me discuss it trend all of that stuff all right now the question the point i'm trying to make here is that i let's call this the starting stage that I'm just putting an outline box to. You had elements in this thing. And the one on the right hand side you have the ionic compound. So ionic compound. So elements to ionic compound is a delta H formation. We know that. That's reaction number one. But 
what is uh, uh, what is uh, this fellow right here, right here, and in each of these two reactions, if I were to label them as reactions number, let's say, two and three, let's call it two and three, two and three are atomization reactions. And what are they making? They're making gaseous at uh, uh, atoms. So from elements, you are going to go to gaseous atoms. Now these are two separate reactions, but we can pull them together. So from this stage to this stage is the sum of two plus three, because two is the atomization of sodium and three is the atomization of chlorine. So from elements, you can go to gaseous atoms and then from gaseous atoms, you can go to oppositely charged gaseous ions. For basically the third box is um, the middle one. In this case, they become gaseous ions. Usme, reaction number four is first ionization energy. So I'll write this as first ionization energy is reaction number four. And reaction number five is in fact first electron affinity. Yeah, that's what we have now. So elements to gaseous atoms to gaseous ions to to an ionic compound. This right here is your uh, what you might call it overall change. So you can go uh, if I were to call this stage A, stage B, stage C, and stage D. So A, if I do this B, C, and D, though you know, yeah, A, B, C, D. You're going from A to B, B to C, and then C to D. And C to D is something completely new to us, where you're going from gaseous ions to ionic compound. It is not ionization, it's not uh, formation, because formation is from elements to ionic compound. This is from gaseous ions to ionic compound. And this is what we call delta H lattice, or lattice enthalpy of sodium chloride. And by definition, this type of reaction is lattice enthalpy. Now, obviously, it'll have a certain value and trends and all that, we'll discuss that. But right now, what we just created was a pathway from elements to compound directly and indirectly. Indirectly went through multiple changes. It becomes gaseous atoms, then gaseous ions, and then the ionic compound. And we came across three reactions we have seen before. Formations we have seen, atomizations we have seen, first ionization energy we have seen. But there are two reactions we haven't seen. One was the making of negative ions, we call the electron affinity. And then the combination of the oppositely charged gaseous ions to becoming an ionic solid. And this was labeled as lattice enthalpy, when gaseous ions became ionic solid. And then that will result in us having a nice little Hess cycle, which by the way, you might realize that the reaction number one is really two plus three plus four plus five plus six, six being the lattice enthalpy. So the atomization energies, ionization energy, electron affinity, and lattice energy are the individual steps, which together are equal to at this value. What is this value? Formation. And the reason why we're doing this is because the reason why we do Hess cycle is to find the value of something we cannot find experimentally. All of these one, two, one, two, three, four, five are generally what we can find through other means. Six is only found through this method. So six is what we're going to be learning right now, guys. So it's that, right? Six. So far, okay with you guys? So, where were we at? Uh, um, yeah. So, this is the whole Hess cycle, also known, and we'll see that in later, it's called Born Harbor cycle. So far, this is what we've done. We've been able to show you that the formation can be broken into multiple steps. Okay? Now, now we'll talk about this fellow first, electron affinity and the lattice enthalpy. Now, for that reason, we've got to be able to define electron affinity. So I'll use reactions to define electron affinity. Now, it can be for anything. I mean, for example, I just showed you, chlorine, but it doesn't have to be for chlorine. So now, actually, let me just take a new slide. 
little easier. So now we're going to talk about electron affinity. Now again, I'm repeating myself. I know this, but ये तो याद होगा ना कि सोडियम को गैसियस एटम को गैसियस आयन बना सकते हैं एंड वी कॉल दैट फर्स्ट आयनाइजेशन एनर्जी ऑफ सोडियम बट वी कैन आल्सो हैव दिस दैट सोडियम एटम कैन आल्सो बी मेड टू गेन एन इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड इफ इट डज दैट वी कॉल इट द फर्स्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन अफिनिटी ना इट दिस वुल नॉट हैपन नेचुरली यू विल हैव टू काइंड ऑफ फोर्स इट टू हैपन बट इट कैन हैपन जस्ट लाइक यू नो Uh, sodium can lose more electrons and you can have multiple because you might remember that even sodium 2 plus is not natural but i can go from this state to the next state by making sodium 1 plus lose even more electrons and if you might remember it will just be more endothermic because this will require more energy and so just like you can have multiple ionization energies you can have multiple electron affinities but philosophically they are the opposites if ionization energy is, is the energy associated with removing electrons electron affinity is the energy associated with gaining electrons now chlorine ka bhi ye scene hai chlorine you got a made it to lose electrons that's called what ionization energy in this case but if i want chlorine to gain electrons that would be called in this case this will be the first electron affinity it doesn't have to be only one you can have more than one also meaning after becoming a negative ion it can be gaining another electron to becoming a 2 minus ion and we'll call that second electron affinity or now i will use a shortcut i mean acronym ea for my not the ea sports but yeah ea yeah you can also do this with oxygen you know an oxygen naturally does make a 2 minus ion so this is o1 minus ion and one, one more electron it makes a 2 minus ion if you write the overall equation then you can say this delta h let's call it 7 is the sum of first electron affinity of oxygen and the second electron affinity of oxygen so far okay i'm fine now which is that if you remember jab hum ionization energies kar rahe the last year ionization energies will always require energy ionization energies are actually endothermic now the problem is that first electron affinities not always but generally are first electron affinities are generally exothermic so now not always but you could say this and i mean you could even want to know why but i mean first the first uh, first the fact is that first electron affinities for most elements more especially or anions are or sorry non metals are exothermic versus all ionization energies are endothermic the reason why ionization energies are endothermic is because you have to do work to make an atom lose an electron even if it's a metal the metals require less work so they are low endothermic non metals require more work so they are greater endothermic okay now on the other hand first electron affinities are exothermic because you are giving electrons into an atom where who's already pulling electrons in from the nucleus so it's like there's no work done on the system so this is not really endothermic but once you have gained one electron what you need to remember is that second electron affinities that means what i'm going to say is that second electron affinities like this fellow and this fellow which is probably if i could if i could even label them this fellow and this fellow these two equations are the second electron affinities and uh, these are both going to be endothermic so second electron affinities or subsequent electron affinities are always endothermic and the reason why the second electron affinities are always endothermic is because work is done on the system there is already the reason is that there is going to be repulsion between an electron and a negatively charged ion and for you to put an electron inside a negative charged ion you have to provide energy for it to be able to overcome this force of repulsion so for second electron affinities 
the electron and the negative ion already are to repel each other you have to provide energy to overcome that force of repulsion hence second electron affinity third fourth fifth sixth which will never come across but there are they are what do you call it uh, endothermic while the first is exo so that's something that you got to remember now the other i mean you don't have to only have electron affinities for non metals you could have it for magnesium also like magnesium can get an electron to become m minus this will be called the first electron affinity of magnesium though we'll never use it it's because we never really talk about magnesium's can naturally occurring negative ions who cares about that we'll never have that really you know but just saying then uh, the other thing is uh, yeah you should also be able to recognize uh, some of electron affinities like for example phosphorus when it becomes a phosphide anion this delta h they can ask you what how do you find this delta h this delta h is simply the sum of the first electron affinity and the second electron affinity and the third electron affinity of phosphorus because the first will make 1 minus the second will make 2 minus and the third will make 3 minus okay <laughs> okay so now after seeing this stuff then we're going to talk about the other reaction that we just saw earlier that was called lattice enthalpy and lattice enthalpy is is the idea that when sodium gaseous atom combined with chloride gaseous ion sorry ions not atoms ions to make sodium chloride solid this energy chain is called delta the delta h for this is actually the delta h lattice of nacl this can only exist for ionic compounds and it is always exothermic always exothermic that's something that you got to remember and it doesn't just happen i mean you could basically the idea is that by definition the lattice enthalpy represents a reaction where gaseous ions become ionic solid for example you have uh, you can have even you let's say you want to make mgo mgo would be magnesium gaseous ion and oxide gaseous ion becoming mgo i'm not saying that's the only way to make mgo obviously the best way to make mgo is burn mg and o in the lab and that's called formation but if i want to talk about a, rep a reaction that represents the lattice energy of mgo this would be it and the reason why we do that is because we cannot be able to predict much about delta h formation but we are very very good at seeing the trends for this particular uh, value uh, this particular equation or term called lattice enthalpy now you could also have it for things that are not one is to one ratio let's say calcium chloride where you need one mole of calcium and two moles of chloride to make one mole of calcium chloride now by definition you need to know the term so what is lattice enthalpy it is the enthalpy change when you make one mole of ionic lattice one mole of solid ionic lattice from its constituent gaseous ions constituent meaning the atoms being ionized so the idea is that is the enthalpy change when you make one mole of ionic solid from its gaseous ions it is always exothermic and why we do this because this term is a good way to represent the strength of an ionic lattice and the reason why you know it's going to be strong is because you have opposite charges attracting each other they go from being gaseous ions with high amounts of energy to being a very 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 stable ionic solid remember ionic solids are the most stable form of i mean uh compounds the reason why this that's the reason why you see most minerals are ionic compounds you have a limestone you have a bauxite all these are ionic compounds because over time they found a stable state which is the ionic compound all right asif i am so sorry we're going to be studying we're going to be now what are we going to do we're going to be able to define lattice enthalpy 
figure out the values, why they change. So why is, for example, magnesium oxide lattice enthalpy greater than sodium chloride? We're going to do that also. And we're going to be able to calculate it. Okay. So calculation is the, through the, uh, what you might call it, through what we just saw earlier, which was, let's say, the same thing we did earlier with sodium chloride, we could do for calcium chloride. Now, if I make the whole Hess cycle for calcium chloride, calcium solid plus Cl2 gas, you know, has to become calcium chloride. Now, the overall reaction is what? Called delta H formation of calcium chloride. Now, the multiple steps I can do is, I can make calcium into calcium gaseous atom. Then the calcium can become into calcium gaseous ions. And we know it makes a two plus ion, so it's two plus. On the other hand, uh, chlorine will become two chlorine gaseous atoms. And then that becomes what? Two chloride gaseous ions. And uh, if this is stage A, let's call it stage A. This is B. This is C and this is D. So now we got A, which is elements, B, gaseous atoms, C, gaseous ions, and D, ionic compound. And the arrow from C to D. Now if I were to know, yeah, and this is the graph sketch. Now this, and um, if I call this arrow uh, reaction one, reaction two, three, four, five, 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 and six for now. How would I label one as? If I were to label things as, what would one be? So one would be, anybody? One we call the standard enthalpy of atomization of calcium. What would two be? Anybody? Yes, two times the standard atom atomization of chlorine. Also, the bond energy of chlorine. Because for gaseous atoms, remember this, that half of bond energy of Cl2 is actually the atomization of Cl. Because they represent the same exact reaction. Half Cl2 becoming Cl. Here we have Cl2 becoming 2Cl, so that's two times the atomization or the bond energy. Then, number three. What is number three? Number three is calcium becoming calcium 2 plus gas. So that is the sum of the first ionization energy of calcium and second ionization energy of calcium. Because you're going from, two, from zero to two plus. And step number four is two times the first electron affinity of chlorine. Because electron affinity of chlorine is one chlorine atom becoming one chloride ion. Here we have two atoms become two ions. And five can be defined as what? The delta H lattice of two. Yep. And uh, obviously six is the standard enthalpy gene formation of CaCl2. And basically what, this is a Hess cycle. So what does that mean for in terms of a Hess cycle? It simply means this, that uh, if I were to just zoom out just a bit, oh, come on. It just means simply that one uh, plus two plus three plus four plus five equals to six. And basically, if you know all of the values but one, you can find that. Generally speaking, this is how we find the value for lattice enthalpy of a compound. Because we actually have one, two, three, four and data booklets and generally we've given the formation and we are told to find this. So this is the application of the Hess cycle to find the lattice enthalpy. Achha, isme kuch yaad wali hai ki atomizations are always endo. endo. For first ionization energies are endo. And kya kehte hai? lattice energy is exo. And first ionization energies are generally exo. So it'll be an exo value mostly. But this will be varying depending on the question. So, but this will come in handy for next class. Okay, why am I telling you they're endo and exo? Because I'll have to do the whole table and all that stuff. So we're going to end this class right here. I mean the theory part. The reason being that you're kind of done with this. Yeah. 
and then next class maybe we can do the bond harbor cycle and then the way uh, the values change and then group two yeah all right